set the stage for anyone that might not they hear the name but don't really know what it is you know what are these tools that we've been hearing so much about the most popular one is the one you mentioned right chat gpt but many 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 ai tools have come out of this that's more than just the chat bot side right it's like build images with text build videos with text, like really sky's the limit now people are getting super creative um, and figuring out how we can use this this new technology i guess to make everything easier Welcome into the Independent Thinking Podcast. This is your host, Rob Stott. We've got a, a fun one on tap today, and it's a conversation um, that was really born out of one of those in-the-hallway uh, conversations at Primetime in Dallas uh, this past uh, March. And uh, it happened with myself and Cyril Aragon, our, our Director of Digital Strategy here for the Site on Time team at Nationwide Marketing Group. And related around, you know, if you're in the world of marketing or, um, you know, interested in technology and, and you know, things like artificial intelligence, you, you've likely heard of something called chat GPT or related services uh, and, and AI chat bots. And uh, Cyril and I, you know, in Dallas had a conversation, you know, just about how, you know, unique and powerful these tools seem and um, how we were seeing them used in, you know, so many different ways and, you know, from pop culture to just, you know, some of the unique uh, applications of artificial intelligence and these chat bots and got us talking eventually about, you know, what, of course, you know, the independent retail side of things, what are some ways that these tools could be used and implemented? And, you know, his team and he specifically are, you know, already at work figuring out how a tool like ChatGPT can be implemented into, you know, the retail world and, um, you know, provide some benefits to, uh, you know, your marketing efforts or in other areas of the business that, that they think about on a daily basis. So, uh, lo and behold, we we decided you know had enough content there. We could talk about it, you know, more than enough content for one episode for sure. So this is something you know we'll continue to talk about down the line. But uh, kind of figure this serves as that that kickoff, the the launch point for a conversation around ChatGPT and related tools in retail. So uh, appreciate him taking that time. So let's dive into it. This is Cyril Aragon here on the Independent Thinking Podcast. All right, we are back on the Independent Thinking Podcast, and uh, despite the title, we promise you this one wasn't you know plugged into some chat uh, program and and generated out. This these are two real people talking about artificial intelligence and things like Chat GPT, and I'm excited to get to dive into that today with uh, Cyril Aragon, our Director of Digital Strategy for Site on Time. Man, how you doing? Doing good, doing good. How about you? I'm all right. Can't complain. You know, we're we're here. We're kicking it and. Uh, an interesting topic, a conversation you and I had, we're, we're kind of following up on it really from uh, just a, you know, one of those hallway conversations at primetime that, that got us thinking like, man, maybe, maybe some more people would benefit from hearing, you know, the things we're talking about, but um, what an interesting topic to, to be able to dive into. I I'm, I'm kind of excited about it, man. I, I don't know about you, but. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. This is the only <laughs> thing that's like been on my plate for like the last six months is like, how are we going to utilize this in some way to help our membership right yeah yeah it's a neat 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 tool and um you know i know a lot of different ways that it can go too so but before we dive into you know ai and and these chat uh you know programs you know tell us for those that don't know you a little bit about yourself your background and and kind of your role here at nationwide yeah absolutely um so yeah i'm, I'm cyril i live in monroe georgia which no one's ever heard of it's uh, about 20 minutes outside of athens georgia so um Happily married, we have two boys um, and a girl on the way in about a month. So super excited! Um, and also congratulations, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. It's like a congratulations, but uh oh. <laughs> no, for sure. Thank you. Yeah, um, and yes, my my background. I've I've been in digital marketing ever since you know the the very start of my career. Right. Um, I interned and then eventually got. Um, you know, promoted to a full-time employee at um, a large optical retailer um, called National Vision. Um, and so if you've heard of America's Best Contacts and Eyeglasses, Eyeglass World, like that's the company yeah. that I, we got a brands. we got an eye doctor's appointment right after the uh, you know a little later the, today for our our kindergartner so may, maybe you know I end up swinging by one of those before we know it. <laughs> so. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> 
And um, yeah, and, and during that time, basically, I was I was managing uh, digital campaigns for for one of the brands, and it was something like 100 or so uh, store locations. So yeah, um, yeah quite a bit, a um, lot to manage. And it was super fun. Um, arduous first <laughs> year of my career, right? Um, and then yeah, um, after leaving there, I worked at a small agency in Atlanta, where I got to work with a lot of cool uh, brands, um, especially for a company that, that size, I didn't think we'd have like high profile clients like, uh, like Nissan and, uh, you know, Amazon and, and things like that. So that was cool. Um, and then, yeah, basically like right when the pandemic happened, this is when I came to, uh, site on time. So yeah, been here ever since. That's awesome. And, and even, you know, I, I think about sort of your team, um, and because we started right, I, I want to say around the same time. So you say right when the pandemic, I was October 19, right around then too, a little bit later uh, for you, a couple months yeah, later. April 2020. Yeah, actually. there you go. So, so yeah, right in the thick of it. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. But t the so, I mean, interesting transition period, right? To be able to come in and, and see sort of, you know, your space took off right away, people leaning into those digital tools and stuff. But in just the mm -hmm. last three years, you know, how how's the role changed for you over time? Um, it's, it's crazy because like, I, I've never like worked remotely. Right. And so, um, obviously like I, I interviewed at the site on time office, but I never got to work there. <laughs> um, and so having to kind of work in that environment with my team and then, you know, learning how to lead and manage from like a virtual environment, that was hard. Right. And then also from like a strategy standpoint, it's like, okay, people are like the consumer behavior now is like people are very risk averse and they don't want to, you know, risk going into the stores or whatever. Like, how do we, how do we adapt our, you know, digital marketing strategies to help with that and still be able to help our membership. Right. So that's, that was definitely the challenge. Yeah, no, I love it's, I mean, kind of ever going or ongoing too, right. Is uh, even before, you know, people getting comfortable with the idea of, shopping online. So how would, how can we leverage these types of tools and, and get people, you know, mm -hmm. back in the store? So something that, uh, you know, it's awesome work and you guys are doing some great things down there. And, um, you know, you, you think of digital tools and having to adapt, you know, and nothing more prevalent, I think right now in, in just sort of the talk uh, of what's going on in this space than these chat tools, you know, we, we mm -hmm. heard the names chat GPT and, and the others that are out there. So, um, before we dive too deep into them, what what can you tell us just sort of about them um, and, you know, what they kind of set the stage for, you know, anyone that might not, they hear the name, but don't really know what it is. You know, what are these tools that that we've been hearing so much about? For sure. I think the most popular one is the one you mentioned, right? Chat GPT, um, which funny enough, like it only started blowing up in October or November of last year, but they've been working on this tool since like 2015, right? And so good for them, good for that company. Um, and, you know, at, at first when, when for like when me and my team were first like exploring this back in like November, right? It was, it was like a cool little fun thing that we would play with and we didn't really think too much of it, but we knew like AI was like on its way to, to, to being a thing. Um, fast forward to now, and not only has chat GPT had some updates and grown and evolved, um, but many, many, many AI tools have come out of this. That's more than just the chat bot side, right? It's like, you know, build text or, or I mean, sorry, build images with text, build videos yeah. with text, like any, anything you can imagine at this point, like. Right. I think just recently can... I saw like someone, there's a, I forget the name of the tool, but people are using it to create like professional headshots of themselves and yeah, uh, I know things exactly like what that. You're about. Yes. Yeah. I, I forgot what it was called, but yes, definitely. And really sky's the limit now. People are getting super creative um, and figuring out how we can use this, this new technology, I guess, to, to make everything yeah. easier. So is there, was there like, I, I mean, we've been hearing, I think for years, right. About AI um, and sort of like, even in, I think about the, you know, the uh, appliance space and there's, you know, things like um, LG and Samsung have, you know, their appliances that have their, their like for LG, I think it's like think uh, IQ, think a Q or something like that. And and it, it dives into like, you know, the appliance can self-diagnose if there's an issue and then like cause. So like there's, there's AI in the, like, it's not new necessarily. Is this, these, these chat programs and the other things that we're seeing pop up, is it like some sort of, I don't know, did AI find it's like, it, it, it's 
key application and that's why it exploded? Or was there some sort of moment that you think sort of resulted in this proliferation of all these different use cases right now? Yeah, for sure. It's 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 really hard to say. So yes, AI as a as a topic, as a thing, has been around for forever, right? But like it, it kind of seemed like only like a select few people were doing something with it or even had access to it. Um, I think what's cool with Chat GPT is that it's like free and anybody can use it. Yeah. And like when I when I first discovered it, it was because like on LinkedIn, I follow a lot of digital marketers and other SEOs and, and things like that. And, you know, posts were going around about how to use this tool to like make your life easier. And I was like, <laughs> no way it can do that. Right. And I was, <laughs> it, I was like, oh, crap. And then, of course, like it, like ChatGPT reaches national news and, you know, all these things. And it just, I think that really helped it tremendously. Like not only the tool itself, but AI in general. And yeah. Then, yeah, now we live in this world of everything AI. Yeah. It's, a, I mean, crazy. And I, I hate to harp on the one tool, but like I, I think about just, you know, you mentioned playing around with it and seeing sort of the the possibilities, the chat, you know, setting up an account and just asking it a couple questions um, and thinking from like the, you know, the communication side of like what's possible and, um, you know, seeing, you know, it, it comes back with some really unique things, like depending on what you ask it, whether if it's like, I need an article on this and mm -hmm. you know, I, there's concerns I'm sure that we can get into and things like that about, you know, what, what that actually means and where that information's coming from. But like the, the accuracy with which these things are coming back, um, is really unique and it kind of gets to, you know, there are a lot of different use cases and applications. So I, I'm, kind of curious from your seat and I know this is something you're diving into is like okay well it's a chat tool um but what's what's sort of the retail application here like I, what are you guys discovering from that perspective and um have you found a a, a way or multiple ways that it, it really could apply to the retail industry yeah um I think so um so using like our operations as an example right and and truly this isn't too integrated into our processes yet because I want to be very delicate with how we use it, right? But um, like for example, like back to the to the article part that you were talking about, like yes, it can spit out some great stuff, but it's so not human, right? So like you can still can <laughs> right. that there. But at the very least, it's eliminated writer's block, right? Like there's no need to sit in front of your your paper or your computer, right? And just sit there mm -hmm. for 10 minutes thinking about like what do I want to write about? Like if you know like a single word in your topic, just throw that in there and let's see what chat GPT gives us. And then I'm sure the gears will turn, right? Right. And so we've done small tests here and there. Um, and, you know, we've been able to, um, you know, make our writing times faster with articles and, and things like um, social media posts and ad copy. It, it serves as a great like foundation, I guess you could say. Um, so so, yeah. That's a great. That's a great term. And again, uh, you know, thinking from the uh, the writing standpoint, and and even you know, journalists out there that may or may not, or the the retailer uh, that has the, uh, the you know, their journalist by night or something like that. Like the the mm -hmm. thing they think about is like, oh, this, it's coming for my job, right? That's the the first question right. is like, these things are coming for my job. But your point about you know, it's the foundation. You you see the things that come out of this, you know, that are that are um, you know, translated to you. Um, it, it's, it is a foundation. There's not the color commentary. There's not the, you know, I think of what, from a journalist perspective, like the quotes, it's not going to generate quotes from a source that you have that, that really add to the context of a story. So I, I can imagine, you know, the, of course there's going to be concerns because it's a new technology, not familiar with it, um, and sort of what it's capable of. And, uh, you know, it'll be interesting to see how it gets used and, and the impacts on certain industries, but, um, you know, it is. I, I love that word that you use foundation and that that's kind of what mm -hmm. sticks with me. Um, you know, you saying that. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And, and who knows, maybe one day, right. Maybe it's more than a foundation one day <laughs> right. scary enough to think about, but <laughs> the more, the more we feel it, right. It's one of those ever learning tools, right. So the more right. we use it, who knows? Um, yeah. but well, actually, you know, funny enough, uh, I, I asked it cause you, you play around with it and you, you're just like curious how you can use it. I asked it for, um, you know, I, I wanted to do an interview, right? So I, I wanted, I was like, what are some great here? I'm giving away the, uh, the, the punchline I was going to give at the end here. I was asking it for some great interview questions on a, a podcast about AI. Yeah. And it, it, what it did was it spat back out to me a Q and a 
of like as if I was interviewing Chat GPT itself. Like, hey, I'm Chat GPT, it and <laughs> like nine questions worth of questions and answers, like of an actual interview with Chat GPT. So I say that it doesn't spit out, you know, uh, quotes, but here we are. It's going to be quoting itself before we <laughs> <Right>. know it. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's crazy. All, you know, it thinks it's human, right? So <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's man, it's cr- oh scary, <laughs> but no, right. it, but at the same time, like really cool because there are, you know, I I'm sure we don't have them implemented like to your point not implemented it within nationwide yet but i'm sure in your you know research of and you know just following of this this these types of tools i'm sure you've come across some really cool applications or how retailers are using it are there any that come to mind when you think of you know an ai strategy within retail that stand out to you that mm-hmm. you know just are are really neat or sort of like i said caught your attention for sure yeah um i think um I think the the kind of like the use cases that could apply to retail the most, and not that I've necessarily seen it so far, but yeah. you can use Chat GPT to help with your market research. Um, you could um, there are plugins within Chat GPT where like you throw in um, a competitor's URL and it does like a complete competitive analysis of like what is going on there. Yeah, um, yeah, just just crazy crazy things, especially when it comes to the uh, marketing side of things, and then when it comes to general like operations like you can you can have chat gpt linked to your email it can help you write emails right so like (laughs) even even if you don't use it at like a grand scale that at least saves you a little bit of time um as a retailer as any business really right um and and yeah i i was actually doing a little bit of research uh yesterday and this morning and like the the things that people have like the, the different plugins that users like you and me have created um yeah in chat gpt is insane right like you can with one click you can write an entire book yeah you can do a video script you can do code like it's it's I, insane so this is getting like really in the weeds of uh the the techie side but i i'm pretty sure i also saw you know you, you again there's we're following this so the the stories that we're able to come across probably a little different than other people but i'm pretty sure i saw someone use I, whether it was chat gpt or another tool um use the the program to write like a Google Chrome plugin that they ended up selling and making like a boatload of money off of because like they, and they didn't have an ounce, like a, a single, they didn't, mm-hmm. hadn't taken a single coding class, but the yep. platform was able to write the code for that plugin. And it was something that like no one had thought of before. Um, so just like something like that. And then, but down yes. to some, to your, some of the examples you mentioned, like, I think one of the things we hear of so often especially during prime times. And I think of like the, the social media NLAs that a lot of your team ran that, that we were involved in as well. Um, people, they're concerned about the time that it takes, you know, if they don't have a dedicated person to create social media posts and uh, things like that, like talk about, you mentioned the time saving, like here's an opportunity, a tool that you could leverage to, you know, create those posts. If you don't have the the mental capacity on a day-to-day basis, cause you've got so many other hats you're wearing um, ask it for a, a, a list of a bunch of, you know, different social media posts that you could write or, or that mm-hmm. it could write for you rather, um, you know, to, to sort of take that workload off of you and just make life easier, make the job, you know, it, a little bit more streamlined, honestly, for exactly. you. And and actually there, there have been prompts that people have published where it literally makes a PowerPoint presentation for you just based on like a <laughs> sentence that you type in, right? So like if, if we ever want to go that route, right? Like, well, so, so crazy thing. I would love to see, uh, again, you know, I, I said I uh, I kind of lifted the veil before I was going to tell you at the end that the, these were questions generated by chat GPT for a podcast. Like, but you think about NLAs, like I, I would love to see an NLA that, you know, you just ask chat GPT to create an NLA for you on on something maybe it's ai in general but uh you know and then just let people know like hey by the way this was an ai generated right. you know, learning academy class and just see what the reaction is i'm sure it would be you know amazing first of all yeah for sure so, you know what i'm gonna i'm gonna put that it in might here. be a, might be a thing you know don't let them know ahead of time but then you know by the end of it just be like hey did you did you know <laughs> and just right. like showcases one you know you're there. You're not going to just blind uh, again, you know, for the concern around like, okay, well, are these things going to pop up everywhere? I think it's a, it's, it's got to require, you know, a little bit of, um, I, you know, oversight from the people using it. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I, I don't want to get down the, the path of like, um, you know, talking about the, the, whether it, it it's 
you know, ethical and things like that. But like, I, I can imagine you using these types of tools and knowing that, you know, you're asking it for something and it gives you, you know, this, this learning and we'll use the learning Academy example. And um, just knowing that you can take that, but then it, it it's on you to make sure that the information is accurate. And so there is still that, you know, that human element to it so that, you know, it, it's not just throwing random things out there and we're just like willy nilly following blindly these AI outputs. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Because like anybody, anybody in the crowd, for example, in in LA, like they'll catch you if you slip, right? Like they'll know if it's just a straight up copy and paste or whatever from chat GPT. Like if it looks, if it looks like, and smells like it probably is. (laughs) Right. (laughs) So so, yeah, we're not going to be able to get that by our members. So for as much as, you know, It'll be cool to see that if if you do do that, you know, I don't tell yeah. me one. I'll, I'll sit in I, now. I know next time I'm going to be sitting in on um, all your L, all your NLAs, but um, you know, it'll be unique to see if that actually comes to fruition. But um, no, so I I mean, when we're kind of talking, we we've covered a lot of sort of areas of this, but but when you talk about sort of that AI strategy in general, um, you know, and implementing that into your business and. Uh, I don't even know if we've gotten this far to to kind of defining what it actually means, but um, a retailer listening, if they're like, well, you know, there's so many different ways to go about using AI, it sounds like from just what we're talking about. But if they want to build out that, str- like, what does it actually mean to build out an AI strategy or integrate these things? Like, what does that mm-hmm. look like? Um, well, I think I think I would say, like, the the lowest hanging fruit when implementing this into your current business is to find ways to use it to just make everybody's lives easier, right? Because then, you know, productivity is increased and, you know, that means less costs and, you know, more margin and et cetera, et cetera. Um, But I would look operationally to see how you can use this technology. If any retailers listening, if they have an in-house marketing team, they need to be the first ones to be exploring this tool and figuring out how they can make those lives easier. Right. Um, and you know, like, like a simple thing that I use it for is like, okay, like I know that there's a certain persona in this market where it's like grandmas just really love to buy these refrigerators and I need ad copy to be able to write to them. And like, I'm not the most creative person. I'll know if it looks good and it's hitting the point, but like, help me. Right. Like, right. <laughs> like AI help me out. And then, yeah. you know, have it generate that for you. You yeah. know, simple as that help with emails, do those kinds of things. No, that's awesome. Yeah. And then on a broader scale, which is something that I've kind of put on my plate is like, um, you know, for the entire membership, when they're thinking about their marketing strategies, whether they're doing it in-house or with site on time or RWS or, you know, whatever the case, um, you know, how can we use this tool to help with either, um, you know, keep our competitors at bay or, you know, just win more market share, anything like that. That's something that I've been stewing on right now. And so, um, yeah, I'm, I'm hoping to have, you know, better answers there in the future, but yeah, it's, it's on my mind. Well, and, the, uh, the interesting thing, you know, you're, you're talking about is kind of where does it live? Right. So it's, mm-hmm. it's a tool, it's a very technical tool. So a lot of people are like, well, should my, my IT team, is this something they should be monitoring? But a, a lot of what you're saying is it's the marketing side and those are, you know, professionals that are proud, like to your point and what you're doing, like they're looking into this and that's probably an area that, you know, if they haven't thought about it related to your business specifically, it's at least in the back of their minds because they're hearing and seeing so much about it. Mm-hmm. Yep, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And and maybe I'm looking at it too one dimensionally, right? But from all the use cases that I've seen, it's like there's a lot of marketing ones, right? And so might as well put it there first in, in that team's hands and see where that goes. No, that's awesome. I, I love that. And I mean, I, I think a conversation around this wouldn't be complete if we didn't at least talk about some risks of of this kind of technology. Like, sure. have you thought about that at all? And and oh, you know, yeah. what what kind of things come to your mind when you you hear about you know this and and its kind of capabilities? Yeah, I think I think the uh, the the first thing that comes to mind is like the the risk of plagiarism, right? Um, I think like even even I don't know like how the back end of this thing works, right? And I think most people wouldn't, but they've got to scrape this information somehow, or at the very least, this AI model is like learning from every, like everybody's information that's already out there. Mm-hmm. Um, so if like I ask it to ro- uh, write a blog about fish, right? Like I'm sure everybody else's like fish articles are are being scraped and molded and, and doing something. And maybe it might spit out something that's very similar to somebody else's thing, right? So 
plagiarism is 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 one and then two the incorrect information um even chat gpt itself says hey like the accuracy is at this level like always check like we're not liable like you know things like that um and then um there there um there are stories out there that people have used this tool for for wrong right like right. right now we're talking at it talking about it from like a business standpoint but people have tried to use it to help them with hacking things and all this kind of other stuff and so there's that risk and yeah it's just a totally new frontier yeah. for everybody but and i don't think anybody's an expert and it's like yeah like, you think so a, the ways it was, has been used for like wrong and one thing that not that this is like it doesn't rise to the level of well maybe it does for the the artists involved but like didn't drake and someone else just like sue uh ai yes. tool because a a song was created with like them in the weekend drake in the weekend or something like that yes yes so that um that was like all over tiktok and i think that's where it originated but yeah. um yeah i guess somebody made an ai like they they took a voice sample and used that to make an entire song um and it ended up blowing up and getting more views than like some of their other <laughs> right. some of their I, it's they're like hey unbelievable hey. <laughs> meanwhile i think another artist uh i forget who uh, it was um but another artist realized that and they were like hey if if you do that if someone does this and uses my voice and like it it blows up like i'll split royalties with you something like that so right exactly I, so yeah. getting ahead of, like that's how artists are having to think now because of yes. these tools it's just man it's crazy <laughs> it's really right. unbelievable and and like, God forbid that like the AI does better than you, right? Like, right. That's, that's <laughs> <awful. laughs> oh man, <laughs> we're just gonna have a hologram up on stage. Well, not which isn't you know unreal because you think of the the Michael Jackson hologram from years ago and just yep. having people you know use those voice like we could have new Michael Jackson songs before we know it, <laughs> like, right. just exactly. because of voice samples. It's unbelievable. And they've actually done that with um the rapper um Juice World. Yeah. So he he passed away a few yep. years back, right? And uh, yeah, now there's AI songs all it's over. Crazy the man, <laughs> it's really yeah. crazy. Oh, but I, a tool that we can, I, I mean, I think talk about forever. Well, one other thing I, I'll, I'll you know, mention, I think or, or that is worth mentioning is that you know these tools that they require that sort of the input, right? The person that knows yeah. how to to you know ask for the things that they need, and it can get as you know as simple as you know to your example of uh, i need a, a blog on fish to you mm -hmm. know we've seen i know i know teachers are going to hate this but examples of like you know someone that needs a, a paper written at you know 700 words you know double spaced mm -hmm. at a c level like it, you can get very oh, intricate yeah. with like how you ask so i know there's a you know it, it could be something you know you talk about the marketing teams and whether it's our own or um at, at retail uh you know those input professionals people that know how to use these yes. tools and are asking like there's a a real you know explosion in the space you know uh, of a need for those types of people uh, that i'm sure you've seen too oh yeah for sure and 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 that's kind of been the um kind of the argument from like the the ai folks is like like yes you know like nobody likes to talk about it but this is probably going to replace some jobs in the future right but at the same token like new ones will come in the form of like prompt writing engineers right. or whatever you want to call it and, and things of that nature. So, so yes, definitely. Um, knowing how to form those prompts, I learned early on in, in my team too, like we'll just help chat GPT give you that good output. Right. right. So. Yeah, no, it's awesome. Really unique stuff and um, ever changing for sure. Uh, yep. So we'll, we'll be excited to continue to follow not only the tool itself, but how, you know, you guys are using it and, um, you know, wh where it, you know, can sort of fit into our retailer strategies as they, you know, look to implement these things. So awesome. I knew it was going to be fun talking about this, man. I, <laughs> I don't know if you could tell that I got fired up during no, sure. <laughs> so, so it's a cool conversation. And I know, you know, you, you're living this in, in living in this every day. So appreciate you taking the time to, to chat with us about it, but uh, so real man, uh, well, I, I think we'll have to do this again eventually, you know, oh, yeah. follow up because <laughs> I think yes, we just kind of, so. you know, hit the tip of the iceberg here with, uh, you know, what uh, is possible in this space. So for sure, yeah, let us uh, let us tinker around here on the digital side of things and let's see, uh, in a few months, like where we're at. It's awesome, man. And if you didn't, you know, get the uh, the word already, be sure to sit in on all of his NLAs, you know, in Nashville. See if you can figure out which one was written by ChatGPT. <laughs> It'll be a lot of fun, man. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much. You bet.
Awesome. And thanks again to Sai for taking the time and, uh, you know, chatting about these tools. Um, you know, it's crazy world, <laughs> evolving world of artificial intelligence and, uh, you know, scary, but also, you know, really unique and cool, I think. So we're excited to see what his team, uh, what they're capable of and, and, you know, finding out how we can use these tools in, um, you know, our own business. And then of course our members businesses as well. So unique, unique, just industry and, and space to follow. So appreciate him sharing a little bit of insight. And as always, appreciate you listening to the Independent Thinking Podcast, and we'll catch you next time.